dear children welcome to the next resource that is soil as a resource now when we have introduced ourselves with the land and soil at that time we have seen that soil even though it is a part of a land but it is studied separately that is because of its use it is fulfilling one of our major requirement basic requirement that is food and for growing food soil is a major component it's all depend upon the soil's fertility quality variety that what are all types of food crops we will be taking and because of this soil is dealt separately because its problems are different its solutions are different it has to be studied differently and if we include it in a land then it may get neglected hence soil needs to be studied separately so soil is a separately studied resource now obviously it is a resource because it is useful for growing the crops and this is how uh, the main thing regarding soil which we will be working or studying more about that is the characteristics of these soils plus the conservation techniques and we will be also seeing what are the types of crops which are grown in different different types of soil so let's begin with the soil first of all soil is which part of the earth surface here we have that is the soil is the top fine layer of the earth's crust earth's crust the hardest layer of the crust and in that also the topmost layer which is very narrow it is not long it is actually not very deep it is just a narrow layer and this topmost fine color powder or you can say the mixture this is called as the soil now soil there are always the controversies whether it is a renewable resource or whether it is a non renewable resource if we see it is basically a renewable resource because soil formation process is continuously going on it is continuously going on constantly it is going and hence the soil is getting renewed again and again that is another thing that yes it takes millions of years just to form 1 cm of soil but because the process is continuous the formation occurs on a large scale and as a result we call it as a renewable but because it is taking millions of years some of the scientists they also say that it is a non renewable resource so we can deal it as a both way our textbook has given us as the renewable resource there is one more line given over here that says it is a living system now because it is a living system no living system living what is the characteristics of anything which is living when whichever is whichever thing is living we find that it is growing it is showing some changes here living has nothing to do because the living organisms are there in the soil that that's why it is a living system here the system is living that means the soil formation soil is having the continuous system of its formation it is an ongoing process and because this system is going continuously it is growing on and on and on and any living thing it grows and hence it is called as a living system if you get this particular question that explain that how the soil is a living system in this you have to first of all give the soil profile you have to present that is a diagram second you will be explaining the soil formation process which we will be soon studying now and third which you have to importantly include in the answer and that is that the process is going on continuously it is continuously growing hence the soil is called as a living system so here we have the soil as a living system about soil few details over there now regarding the formation soil profile profile when anything you cut in the vertical section when we see the layers this is the profile we are seeing now whenever you will see a soil profile you will find every soil requires a base rock a parent rock from where the soils will be formed parent rock plays a very important role parent rock as you have studied in your earlier classes three types of rocks are there 
we have igneous rocks we have sedimentary rocks and we have metamorphic rocks igneous which is made out of the lava that is when the lava comes out and when it cools down that is an igneous rock sedimentary rock when the river flows and brings lots of sediment and when the sed sediment gets deposited on one and another that gives ha that hardens actually and this hardened rock is called as a sedimentary rock now these two are considered as the base rocks we primary rock that is the igneous rock and after that you get the sedimentary rock and from these two rocks when a completely new rock is formed that is called as metamorphic like you have studied in your earlier classes like sandstone or clay is basically the uh, sedimentary rock but when they convert due to heat pressure or atmospheric actions they turn into the like uh, clay and all they turn into the granites and all likewise they become similarly you have when the metamorph uh, the igneous rock also turning into a different type of rock these are metamorphic rock metamorphic it means when the basic rock goes under some changes and a changed rock like limestone converts into the marble so this is what the metamorphic now this was just for revision the parent rock now the parent rock it is very much below that is a part of a earth's crust now this rock will undergo to some kind of different different processes of weathering weathering that is the breaking breaking of rock breaking of rock can occur by number of things plant roots plants and animals burrowing animals they can be responsible for breaking the rock sometimes the chemical actions like the sudden heat and sudden rainfall the climate that can be also responsible if you are staying in extreme climate region then the day time very hot and night time it is very cold so due to contraction and ex uh, expansion also the rocks can break there are various processes by which the weathering can occur so when the rock will get weathered broken into pieces after that it will be further disintegrated that means it will become more finer and finer and finally you will have you will reach to the topmost layer which is a very fine layer now this layer when comes in contact with vegetation or some kind of microorganisms or living things then they start accumulating humus also in that so in this humus collection the soil starts getting uh, fertile sometimes in this process you also find the fossils are also found like the dead animals or plant remains they get trapped in these and then even those can be also there so this is how the soil profile where you have the parent rock at the bottom then weather rock material subsoil with sand silt and clay mixture and then finally topmost soil with the humus collection so the layers likewise you will get the fine layer of the topmost layer of the soil now it is not always possible to find such kind of profile in all the types of soil because this is a basic formation process but then all the soils will not have the same process like for example if i want to discuss the alluvial soil alluvial soil like you have alluvial soil fully in your northern plain last year if you remember how the northern plains have formed so that has formed you have studied that the rivers from the himalayas they are bringing lots of sediment and then they are depositing it into the northern plain so in the, in case of northern plain then what is happening that somewhere the different parent rock got eroded and then that eroded material was carried and carried and then it was deposited so if you dig the alluvial soil region you may not find at the bottom the parent rock because parent rock was somewhere else so this is what is for few soil soils this thing will not work that is the soil profile you may not get now how the soil forms that means what are the things which are forming the soil factors actually factors affecting soil formation these are the five major factors out of which two are very important first one parent rock now what will happen 
because of parent rock to the soil parent rock will give its color texture then chemical properties whatever chemicals minerals will be there in the parent rock they will be transported transferred to the soil minerals also contain and permeability porosity and everything these all kind of chemical properties they will be and some of them are physical properties also so you they will be given to the soil by the parent rock next is climate now climate will decide the speed of weathering and even the quality of the soil also like temperature rainfall it influences the weathering weathering and humus collection humus collection if we take imagine the soils of northeast lots of humus so the soils are different they are the forest and mountainous soils are there whereas the deserts rajasthan due to very high temperature no humus at all so these soils are arid soils so the type of soil fertility of the soil formation speed of the soil will all get affected by the climate we have the next factor that is time older the soil thicker the soil actually determines the thickness of the soil if it is older it will be more and more thicker now here not related but still i would like to give you this example because this is very prominent example we remember that in uh, uttarakhand we had few years back a huge flood actually at that time the complete soil got eroded and if you visit these areas now you will find that the big big rocks the complete bed rocks and parent rock they are on the top now this is such a huge loss of soil this they such a big time it took to form the soil layer but that everything got eroded and now it will take another millions of years for that region to get covered with same type of soil right so this is what the time matters a lot and here you can also get one hint that how bad the erosion matlab how badly the erosion can affect the soil resource we have next very important flora fauna and the mi- microorganisms now these will add to the humus humus which is give the organic items and this will decide the fertility relief now relief here as you have studied last time slow suppose if we are on the mountain slopes how much soil will get accumulated that decides the altitude determine the accumulation of soil that means how much thick the soil will be if it is a foothills like northern plain the thickness of soil will be a lot because lots of soils are getting accumulated but if the soils are on the mountainous region it will be constantly getting moved it is flown down by the river by the wind so on the slopes the Ero- the occurrence of the soil will be less like to see over here like the hills if you have if the soils are getting if it, it will be accumulated lots like here you will have lots of soils getting accumulated because accumulation is more here the relief is less but if we talk about the slopes if we talk about these soils then here the constant flow of the water will not allow the soil accumulation this is what the five factors of formation soil formation now there are other factors of nature which also affects the soil formation now you can say these are the agents these are the uh, things which are helping in one or other way you have wind now role of wind in order in in the erosion wind erodes from somewhere and then it deposits so yes in the soil formation wind also plays an important role water yes running water running water will bring the uh, sediment from somewhere and it will deposit so that is also playing glaciers glacial action also glaciers also they move the parent rocks and all and then they move uh, and then they deposit then you have the natural decomposers natural decomposers humus collection is there but then natural decomposers will add to the nitrogen fixations and all they act actually so here these are also the other factors but the main five factors will be the previous ones now every soil is having various types of characteristics or properties if we say it has physical properties such as like aggregation and structure what kind of structure the soil is having sand silt clay or only clay and sand or only sand likewise 
surface sealing that means how kind what kind of porosity and all these are also there surface sealing that how much it is going down compaction that how closely clay soils are very compact porosity like the sandy soil were very much porous water movement and availability these are few physical properties chemical properties ph level how many salts are there sodium then nutrient holding capacity nutrients availability also biological like fauna fauna microfauna these are the microorganisms roots biological activity organic matter the thing is that all these things are different in different different soils and because of that you do not have the soils of one single type we have variety of soils so depending upon their all these properties we find that the soils are of various types the one which is very familiar to us as we aware that is the alluvial soil now alluvial soil completely covered in the northern plains this is one type you have another black soil where we are staying in the deccan trap region totally looks black we have red and yellow color soil if you have visited konkan maharashtra western side you will find the soils are reddish color over there we have laterite now laterite uh, is a very infertile soil it is just like a brick material like bricks by which you made the house if you crush that the same technique is naturally used or naturally the same technique is getting done and these type of soils are formed arid soils so arid soils in the deserts we have one more type that is forest and mountain soil now forest and mountain soil here mainly the soils which are found in himalayan region that is considered and himalayan region it is mountainous also plus it is forested also so the soils which are found in himalayan region they are called as forest and mountain soil if you remember last year in the natural vegetation chapter you have studied forest uh, that is the uh, high altitudinal forest right montane forest if you remember as for montane forest you did not study that there is a single type of plant similarly in the forest and mountainous soil you do not get a single type of soil like if i am talking about the foothills look like these are the foothills mainly there the soil is found in the mountainous region because otherwise to earlier part himalayas the relief wise is very rugged topography so no accumulation of soil is going on maximum accumulation goes at the foothills or in the river valleys so the soils in forest and mountainous region we find in the alluvial fans wherever the rivers are depositing and breaking into the slope suddenly so such kind of depositions occur river terraces like you will find one layer deposition another layer deposition even these are fertile we find one more type of soil in this and that is acidic basically this is in the upper altitude where the snow covered regions are there so wherever the snow covered regions are there in the himalayas these regions are having the acidic type of soil and this is what we have we are going to study in the next part of course that is the various types of soils we will be studying so here we have the very first type of soil that is alluvial soil now in this session i'll just cover the alluvial soil now from here onwards i would like to tell you one thing specifically the slides which i have used that is covering not even 10% of material from the textbook given so the slide material will not be used for writing the answers you are going to read the textbook find out the characteristics as it is i have given you in the assignment to prepare a tabular form in this so you have to literally go through each and every line and then those informations you are going to use for writing your answers so the very first soil which we have that is alluvial soil alluvial soil formation we have already discussed mainly found in the northern plains northern plain fully made up of alluvial soil obviously northern plain is made up of three river system ganga brahmaputra and indus similarly the alluvial soils of india they are made because of these three river systems 
that means ganga river brahma brahmaputra river and the indus river so you have ganga brahmaputra basin and all regions also then where is it is found so you have the map attached which you will be seeing uh, there the complete northern plain parts of rajasthan and all the plains you will also have the soils present in the complete delta regions do you remember last year third chapter drainage you have studied many delta regions krishna river godavari river kaveri river so you have marked very small small areas where the delta regions were there and these delta regions are also the places where the alluvial soils are found so here you will be if you get the allu alluvial soils to mark these are the places which you have to mark now the next thing alluvial soils they are the combination of course of perfect combination of the sand silt and clay then uh, these soils uh, you will have like formation uh, here composition the, they are rich in lime and potash you will get that that these soils are very fertile basically they are rich in potash phosphoric and the lime they are very good for the cultivation of rice wheat sugarcane cotton oil seeds and jute so punjab haryana uttar pradesh madhya pradesh bihar west bengal and even the delta regions they are found characteristics they are very fertile fine grain and uh, they are of various types now types in this if you remember last year we have done the types of these soils bhangar khadar terai and bhabar under what heading have we studied that relief wise division of northern plain so relief wise division of northern plain okay we will be doing in that detail for every soil you have to take out one positive point and one negative point so for alluvial soils positive points are many you can pick up and write any here it is highly fertile soil you can write down it is good for cultivation of what you can also write down that it is rich in potash and all also negative that in drier areas like in uh, rajasthan also we find few regions where the alluvial soils are there but these regions if we want to cultivate then we have to use the irrigation technique so that is only minor negative part you will find for this soil now as i was talking about the soils variety of types and all now this mainly found in the piedmont plateau or piedmont region piedmont region it's the foothills of the mountain and this is the exact place where the northern plains are located now here you will find that these soils are known by various names and they are first duars second terai and third khos let's go back duars now duars it is the same soil but then they are known by different names so duars these are the flood plains and uh, foothills of the eastern himalayas in the northeast india and around bhutan so bhutan or you should study assam region assam region whichever alluvial soils are found these regions they are known as duars then terai terai if you remember dudwa national park uttar pradesh so it means below nepal and below uttarakhand whichever alluvial soils are there remember only in the piedmont zone that means only at the foothills not the complete northern plain only at the foothills like uh, if i want to show you here let's make it <coughs> very clear that is let us take a color okay here they have shown this section you will find only the green shaded region only this small part not the whole part right only this small part is basically the terai soils not the complete alluvial so likewise only foothills in uttar pradesh and all they are known as terai terai are the belts of marshy land at the foothills of mountains and then you go ahead with khos khos they are known by the khos name in the region punjab and all so shivalik sa the youngest ranges of himalaya southern slopes of shivalik range in punjab and himachal 
so this is punjab and himachal where the khos they are called as khos so it is like duars terai and the khos right so till here we are going to do today